Hello everyone. So, I a few days ago picked up this DYS Smart 3-axis gimbal and got it installed on my Phantom. And I didn't find too many people using them with the Phantom 2, at least uh, posting videos. So I thought I'd make a, a video to show some of the things that uh, I've learned with having this gimbal. Um, just to go over what you're looking at here. Just a couple things that I had trouble with. One is how it's mounted. Um, it's mounted just using the standard GoPro mount that you can get for the Phantom 2. If you just type in Phantom 2 standard GoPro mount uh, into Google, you should uh, find this mount. That is this uh, the silver piece right here. And it comes with a little white piece uh, that connects a GoPro without a gimbal to the Phantom 2. Uh, it's about 15 to 20 dollars. <clears throat> and after that all you can all, you can just screw uh, the gimbal plate directly into that with the two uh, brass um, extensions. <clears throat> so that's how that's mounted. Another thing is I have the uh, SRP Snake River uh, prototype ND filter on the GoPro. It's an, this one is an ND8. If I was buying again, I'd probably get the ND4, but I got a really good deal on this one, so that's what this is. It takes care of shadows from the propellers as well as helps to eliminate any jello. I also uh, went to Radio Shack and picked up just a standard uh, momentary button. Uh, there are two types if you get this. Uh, uh, that one is normally open and the other one is normally closed. If you're going to do this modification, you want to make sure that you get the one that is normally open. And then what you do is you just take two two pieces of wire and solder them to the Alex Moss board uh, where it says, uh, you can't see it right here, but there, there's a little area on the board that's labeled BTN two little spots and you just uh, solder the, the two wires right to those spots and then you can control certain functions uh, on the gimbal uh, while you're out. The main reason why I did this, it does a couple other things, if I hit it twice it will let me uh, set the gimbal angles by hand in case it's a little off and I can't get to a computer so I just need to fix it really quick. I hit it twice and it lets me set the angles by hand. Uh, but the big thing why it suggests getting a button if you have this gimbal is to, put, if I push it once, it turns off the motors. And I like to turn off the motors when I do a, a compass calibration so that uh, while I'm spinning around the Phantom and having an extreme angle, the motors aren't working really hard uh, trying to... Uh, fight those angles. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, anything else? I think that's pretty much it, it as far as how it's, how it's installed. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to go fly it. I'm going to go fly it right now just to show you how the settings look right now. I probably need a few more tweaks and then I'm going to show you what my profile settings are in the simple BCG software. So, make sure to watch till the end of the video. All right, let's go fly.
so after looking at the video that I just took I'm pretty pleased with the results uh, there's still a little bit of shakiness but I think uh, the gimbal is very stable I think the shakiness that I'm getting now is a result of uh, not having my props balanced for one which I ordered a balancer and should be here soon I'm gonna do that uh, as well as the dampers that are that come with the gimbal when you buy it they're just really soft so I ordered some stiffer ones uh, so hopefully that will take care of that but as far as the gimbal goes it's very very stable I'm not getting any jitteriness it uh, stays stays where it's supposed to <laughs> So anyway, these are the settings that I have. Uh, these are settings that are taken from the RC Groups forum, particularly uh, I used uh, the user uh, Roland Park, and I tweaked his settings slightly to make them work with the Phantom 2 well. Uh, the biggest difference is the yaw motor was around 220 in power, and I brought that down to 150 because it was a little bit uh, unstable after it turned uh, it after a, a big yaw movement so I brought that down a little bit so he here's the first screen limit accelerations a thousand degrees your invert um, motors that will be different uh, depending on your gimbal select the auto uh, function here to see what it suggests for inverting your motors but you should keep your poles it will probably change one or two of the motors uh, to a different pole number they should you should change them back uh, to 14 after running that uh, going to the next tab I have my gyro trust at a hundred and expo curve 12 dead band 10 moving on RC settings I have the pitch and angle mode everything else in speed I have uh, my minimum maximum angle set they're normally default to minus 45 and plus 45 but I, I didn't want I wanted to try to limit the gimbal from getting the landing gear in the shot so I set this pretty tight I'm probably gonna change this uh, because I noticed in the video that my yaw was a little too jerky for my liking but this does work uh, low pass filter is at 7. Moving on in the service tab, this is where I, this uh, is where I set the options for that button that I had soldered onto the board. I have it set so one click is motors toggle on and off. Two clicks of the button will let me set the tilt angles by hands. And three clicks will calibrate the accelerometer. Four clicks will calibrate the gyro. The, the gyro, excuse me, wow. And five clicks, I don't have an option on that. And if I long press, that will reset the controller. Moving on to the follow mode. I have my dead band set around 4.2 with an expo curve of 12. Your yaw offset will be different. You just have to tweak that until your gimbal, when you start it up, stays center and I have the speed set at 10 again I'm probably going to tweak this a little bit but right now this is what it was and then other than that that's all of the settings if you look at the real-time data it's very 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 stable and this is what you want to see is very little movement when nothing's going on and then if I move the gimbal you see it react and and immediately after I stop goes back stable again so anyway I hope this video has been helpful if you have any questions feel free to ask and I will help out the best I can and also if you have any 
suggestions so that I can make this better, feel free to let me know. Thank you very much.